morning. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. Morning, Matt. Good morning, Keelan. <laughs> you just wake up. It sounded like you're like, oh, good morning. I want to do this. Oh. No, I was actually up really early today. Not really early, but for me, it was. Yeah, good. A lot of studying, <laughs> a lot of uh, assignments to do, I assume. Yep. Coming to an end. All right. Yeah, happy trade deadline day. Absolutely. Leafs are going for gold this year. Might be the year since 67. To Boston, Taylor Hall. You can only hope. <laughs> Yeah, you got the Raptors hat there. And, uh, I don't think they're doing anything this year. I hope they don't make the playoffs. No, I, worry? I hope they bomb it. Yeah, right? Like, it, it doesn't make much sense to get in as a play-in team. What's up with that? No. Anyway, get in and get your, your butts kicked by Boston and the likes. Yeah. Then I we mean, lose out on a draft pick. Screw yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Like, is the experience worth it? <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, they're getting their butts kicked anyway, so they don't, they don't need the experience on that. Yeah, we got to re start really looking at rebuilding now before we lose Lowry. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think Lowry's, you know, he's he's saying his swan song is goodbye, is whatever. Yeah. Coffee on my screen. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it's it's interesting times in Toronto. Yep. Kind of getting back to the old norm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raptors losing. <laughs> yeah, Raptors. Blue Jays are. Eh. They're doing all right. They've got some young heavy hitters. Yeah, Vladdy is looking a lot better this year. Yeah, he's thinned out a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, Chad. No, that's not right. They will not lose in the first round. Go Leafs, go. Be positive. This is positive Monday, right? It's April. It's April and the sun is almost shining. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, well, I guess so. I hope you guys enjoyed the heat on Saturday. It's ridiculous. You walk around campus and the tulips are starting to bloom. Man, it's, uh, it's interesting times. I even opened my pool on uh, on Saturday, April. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to put stuff out in my veggie garden, but it's like still April. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's, it's crazy. Spring is here. Absolutely. My magnolia out front is uh, all the um, like the shell of the flower that all cast off, so the, the color is showing. This is the earliest it's ever been. It's crazy. Yeah, apparently uh, in Japan, they had the earliest cherry blossom uh, ever. I saw that. A climate change? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Anywho, what do we have? We have 16 of you on. Uh, getting bored by uh, Leafs and Raptors talk. <laughs> It's all good though. Um, so today, what I want to do is I want to go. Uh, I want to review a few things. Okay, so I want to look at graphs. We'll look at uh, a few graphs that I've got up and going. Uh, we'll discuss those a little more in depth than we have in the past. Uh, I want to review the irrigation um, notes that we we took last week. I want to go over some custom controls, um, spray programs. And then I'll chat a little bit about uh, the final exam coming up. I will post a review. I'll do one similar to the midterm. You guys can go in and practice all you, uh, all you want. Have unlimited tests, um, unlimited tries. And then we'll write the final exam next week. Uh, I don't think I'll have a, um, a lecture next week. Um, unless you guys shoot me an email and say, hey, we really want to chat about this, this, and this. 
But if not, then uh, don't worry about it and we can prepare for the final exam and some of you guys can graduate and get on to the real world, right? Others, others have to do, what is it, the second term still? First year, second term? We'll get rid of you in uh, the fall. All right, let me figure stuff out here. I am going to be using the uh, Priva Office Direct to look at these graphs because I really don't like the graphs on the, the operator. I gotta get rid of this Excel view. All right, so you can see the Priva operator, I assume now, or the my screen. Good. Sorry, I'm looking at you, and Keelan, I'm looking at you because you guys are the only brave ones that want to look at me while I'm talking to you. Keelan colored her hair. All right, so I'm going to open up these graphs. Let's look at uh, whatever. Let's look at graphs. And we've got a lot going on here. And so I'll take you, uh, I'll give you guys a second to, to kind of uh, focus on that and have a look and see what you see. Uh, then we'll talk about a few things, okay? Like I'll ask you some questions and maybe some of you get on, on the chat uh, or actually unmute your mic and we can, we can all talk. Chat, get that little bubble up going so I can see what you're saying. This bubble up here so I can see what you're doing. All right. Got a good setup here. All right, so the graph. So this is uh, zone one, right? We know that because I'm looking here. Um, can I highlight my, I think I can highlight my mouse, no? Annotate. Um, spotlight. Whew, look at that. Oh, I just got rid of it. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. How do I get rid of this? There, look at that. All right, so zone one, we know that because we're looking here, we drop down box, we can pick zones one through six. Okay, so we're looking at uh, real time. This is what's happening in our greenhouse. Uh, this is what happened over a 24 hour period. Uh, so the, the X axis is the time and the date, right? So yesterday was the 11th, today is the 12th, uh, today 10 o'clock ish. 10.30ish, 10.15, around there. That's what the, the, the graph is going up to. Uh, and then 10, 10, 15 yesterday morning, right? Um, so if I ask you guys, let's look at uh, temperature. All right, so what, what was the maximum temperature over the 24 hour period? Can you guys, uh, can you guys tell me that? A couple places you can look. 27.6. Chad's looking at the legend. Right? So if we look at the legend, <clears throat> it'll tell you you look at your, your measured greenhouse temperature, and you find your maximum, so 27.6. Uh, from there, you can look at the minimum. So if we had a minimum temperature, what would that be? 21-ish, okay? Uh, and if I wanted to know the average temperature of the over the 24 hour period, uh, I can look at uh, the average right here and that's 23.2 degrees over uh, that 24 hour period. All right, um, but what time was it uh, 27.6 degrees? Can you tell me that? Around 2 p.m. You see where he gets that? So if I click on this little aim button here, uh, I can drag it along the graph and it'll tell me specific readings, right? So I'll look at here's the value uh, of whatever we're hovering over top of. 
Okay, so I'm looking at the, uh, the red line here because we know it's red from measured greenhouse temperature. The code is red there. Uh, I know heating temperature is red also, uh, but the measured greenhouse temperature is the squiggly line in red. Uh, and we can look at 24 hour period to look at the maximum on the graph. Uh, and around two o'clock, yeah, just before two o'clock, it reaches 27.6 degrees, right? Um, can you tell me why it would reach 27.6 degrees at that point? What else on the graph? Yeah, what else in the graph is showing you that uh, uh, the temperature might be increasing at that point? Yeah, the sun came out, right? The sun actually, whatever, it's starting to rise uh, well over here. Um, uh, you can see this grayish blue line, the sun climbs up. And if we use our hand here, uh, we can drag that down to see when it peaked. It looks like the shape of a mountain. Um, yeah, it peaked at around two o'clock, um, but it, well, the sun peaked at around what? Three o'clock, but our, our temperature peaked at, at around two o'clock in zone one. Wonder why, what do you think? It's the uh, time it takes the greenhouse to uh, react. It's got sure. a- Yeah. It's got to recognize the sun is coming up and then turn on the cooling and make those adjustments. What time did our vents open? When you look at that, I'm going out of whack here. I had a list of questions. Now I'm going out of whack, but that's okay. Um, how do I find the vent? Didn't they open at 12? Everyone's sick around here, moving this around. Yeah, so actual vent position. This is only, uh, this is vent two. Um, but it gives you an indication of, uh, yeah, the gray line, Stephanie, right, uh, of what we're looking at. Um, so vent two would be your windward vent. Uh, so if the windward vent is open fully, you know the, the greenhouse is asking for full cooling at that point, right? So, yeah, right there, um, the vent's opened. Uh, Cam says the, the curtain's open. There you go. So we look at this black line, our curtains covered the crop. Uh, we look at this black line, we follow that along, the curtains are, are, are moving and shaking, right? So they, they started at, at noon, um, covering the crop. Uh, the sun starts peaking at that point. Uh, but you can see what the, the curtains are actually doing, right? They're not shade curtains, so to speak. Uh, they do let shade, they, like they do shade the crop because they're about I think they're, they're 70%. I'd have to look up the specs, but I, if I remember correctly, I think they're 70%. But what is woven in those curtains? Do you remember? Aluminum? Yeah, yeah, reflective material or heat, yeah. Ref insulation, heat retention material, reflective material, you got it. Um, so if it was strictly shade curtains, then they wouldn't have that, uh, that, that material woven into the, the curtains and they wouldn't have the, the radiant heat reflecting back onto the crop. So that's what's happening there, right? So our, our, our curtains start to cover and our temperatures peak correspondingly, right? Um, so then we, we uncover our crop and our temperature drips a little. Uh, drops a little bit. Okay, so sunlight comes out, which causes the, 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 the temperature to go up. Uh, the vents open up, uh, and the sunlight also causes the curtains to cover. Right? The, the curtains cover, the temperature climbs. Um, the curtains uncover, the, the temperature drops. Okay. Looking at the temperature graph, looking at the temperature portion of the graph as well, uh, what is the set point? What are we after? I'll, uh, I'll do that to, to make it. What are we after? What's the, the temperature that we're, we're looking for? The heating temperature. Chill. 
Chad, what's the heating temperature? You got 23, so that's the cooling temperature. Okay, so we open our vents up if the, um, that was the next question. You answered, you're ahead of me. 20? You're trying to read my mind. What do you think, Keelan? 20? Yeah, 20, you got it. So the red line here says 20. Uh, so the heat will, will, uh, will turn on if the temperature drops below 20, which we don't have to worry about here. Uh, and the vents will open Chad already answered at 23 degrees, right? So the cooling temperature is set for 23. Um, if I took that away, you guys can guess just by looking at the, the heating temperature or the, sorry, the greenhouse measured temperature uh, around what cooling temperature we're after. If it's warm outside, uh, the, the heating, or sorry, this red line will, will usually hover around that cooling temperature, right? So we're around 20 degrees out, outside. And if we're, uh, you know, it was what, 26 degrees on Saturday. Yesterday was around 17 to 18. Uh, so if our, our outside temperature is warm, this line will stay around that cooling um, temperature, right? Because the vents are trying to, to keep it at a certain temperature, right? So if you look at the vents, they're not wide open all day, right? They're, they're actually opening and closing as the, as the temperature fluctuates, okay? Um, this isn't terrible. We're only fluctuating within a degree or so, uh, maybe two. Um, as a grower, I'd love to see that line a little more flat, um, a little more consistent, uh, but we're not growing, you know, it's not like we have a production greenhouse where we're, we're after specific temperatures. So this is definitely more than acceptable. Uh, but because it's warm outside, that, uh, that measured greenhouse temperature hovers around that cooling. Um, conversely, if it was really cold outside, okay, let's see if we can find cold day. Well, we'll have to go back a few, a few weeks to find that, eh? There you go. Here's a cooler day. You see that greenhouse measured or greenhouse temperature following that heating line, right? So the outside temperature is colder uh, and the vents, you can see they're not even, I mean, they're over here, they're open a little bit as the temperature climbs, the sun's out, um, but the vents are closed curtains are closed to keep the heat in. So you can tell it's kind of cold outside just by looking at this. I don't even have to, to look at what the, the outside temperature is. I know it's colder. I'm just gonna go to today. Doki. Manipulate that this way. All right. Um, what else can we see? So talked about temperature set points, jumped on the vents, looked at the curtains. <laughs> Might come back to curtains in a second. Uh, let's talk about irrigation. Um, so irrigation starts. Where on the graph do you see irrigation? What color is the irrigation? If there's any color blind people out there, I apologize. This must be a, a nightmare to look at. I guess that's a question for me. Is there anybody that is colorblind? If you do, if, you, if there are, uh, there's going to be a couple exam questions where you're going to have to look at this. So maybe let me know beforehand and we'll, uh, we'll have a little chat. Oh, sorry, you guys can't see it. That's why. <laughs> so that pink line is the irrigation starts. You got it. Right, so if we look at how many starts we had throughout the, the course of 24 hour period, um, look at that max number. Uh, let's say we had 10 starts over 24 hours, right? So this is in zone one, this is uh, um, valve number 32. Uh, we'll review that in a second, um, what that means. But our irrigation starts. So if we follow this ladder going up, each vertical vertical line represents a start. Okay, so we're accumulating starts as we go, and then at uh, what 
Is that 10 o'clock, just after 10 o'clock, it looks like we reset. Eight o'clock, sorry. My 24 hour clock going. Um, you guys notice anything about, uh, about the lines? The horizontal line represents time, right? And the vertical lines represent starts. So what's happening with the, the time as the day goes on? We're giving them more. Yeah, the intervals are, are shorter, right? Why? Why is that? What's 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 going on? Why would what would make the um, the intervals shorter? Yeah, if you remember our our, our irrigation start strategies, uh, we'll have a look at that right now. Strategy one, I believe it is. Um, we're looking at sunlight intensity. Uh, where are we? So here's our, our interval, interval time. Okay, so if we look at minimum interval of 60 minutes uh, to a maximum interval of, of 120, so two hours. Okay. Um, Where is our, sorry, I'm getting myself lost here. Um, the light intensity is greater than 250 and the temperature is, is greater than 18. Um, so as the, as the light increases, we get more, more frequent irrigation starts. Okay, um, let me see, go back for a second. See what valve is programmed to what strategy? So strategy two, start strategy two for 32. All right, so this is the actual strategy. So from five o'clock until eight o'clock, uh, and you can see that's when they start and stop. Um, the intervals are for, for an hour to two hours, and uh, the light is up to 400 uh, watts per meter squared. Okay, so if it's, it's under 400 meters uh, watts per meter squared, it's going to take two hours for the, the, uh, the starts to occur. Um, if it's above 400, then we're looking at an hour in between starts, okay, uh, as well as uh, relative humidity. So if we go back to our graph, we can see those triggers. Okay, so our sunlight intensity, where are we? Measured light. Okay, so our maximum is 597. So right around here, our irrigation starts get shorter and shorter okay, until that uh, that sunlight intensity drops uh, then our intervals go back to two hours okay uh, re measured relative humidity um, there's only uh, a few instances where we're above the 80 percent okay so we're above 80 percent around here maybe around here and here um, so our irrigation starts should happen more frequently around those times um, because our, our humidity is, is way down here during our irrigation starts. Uh, and if we look here, our irrigation is starting at uh, 520, 530 in the morning. Uh, we are two hours between each interval. Um, because the sunlight intensity is pretty low, I look outside, it's pretty gray. And our relative humidity is above 80 for, most, for the most part. So we're just going based off of, of time, really, where our irrigation starts. Okay, so yeah, we looked at how many starts, we looked at the pattern, um, and why does that interval change? Uh, 
You can all you can tell that just by the graph, right? Um, talked about the sunlight, rain. It was a pretty crummy day yesterday. It rained all day today, or yesterday, and it's raining today. Uh, so this wet bulb temperature and the rain state are pretty much the same color, not intentionally, but whatever. So the rain state is uh, is basically either when you're looking at the graph, uh, it, it, it's uh, straight lines, right, up and down. It's either raining or it's not. So there's a sensor on the weather station, um, it kind of sits flat, uh, and it measures moisture going across a, a bunch of basically resistors. So it's measuring an electrical current from one wire to another. It's kind of going back and forth that wire. Uh, and as it rains, the, the, the water rests on that, uh, that, the top of that sensor. Um, and my assumption, I don't know, I'm not an electrician, but uh, the resistance is probably less going across. Right? Water is a reactor. Um, so as the, 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 the electrical resistance drops, it's measuring rain. Right? So it's either raining or it's not. It can measure intensity based on the quantity of water or uh, the rate of that resistance. Uh, but the graph here is only showing up or down, right? So we're looking at rain state, um, zero or, or one, okay? Uh, so here it's raining at around 11 o'clock, stops raining for 15 minutes or so, and it rains again for another hour or so, half hour. Uh, then it stops through the rest of the day, or sorry, for a few hours and then at four o'clock, it starts raining again. If we look at uh, something like humidity levels when it's raining, I mean, there's, there's it's obvious outside humidity levels are 100%, but what's happening in the greenhouse at that point in time? Uh, if we look at uh, the rain states. So here's a, it starts raining here at what, quarter after 1130, somewhere around there. And then we get a big peak uh, of humidity. So obviously it's outside, uh, outside relative humidity is high. Um, why does that make the inside relative humidity high? What's happening at that point? Uh, just follow that along again, right? So here's another event. Uh, rain starts, humidity level climbs. What does the rain control in the greenhouse? What do we have that's, uh, what piece of equipment do we have might be uh, cooling? So yeah, our vents are, are, are being uh, manipulated by the rain, right? So as it rains outside, we're gonna say, hey, vents close a little bit because we wanna protect our crop. Okay? So as the, uh, the vents start to close, look what happens to our humidity level, right? So it rains, Look at our vents here are open, and then it starts to rain, they close, okay? Uh, vents are somewhat open, starts to rain, they close. Rains, starts to close, right? So you get the pattern there. So rain makes the vents close, and as the vents close, you look at our humidity, and our humidity levels jump according to those uh, closures of the, of the vents. There's a lot of information that you can pull just from a, a simple graph, right, for 24 hours. Um, so these graphs are, are, are definitely important to look at. Let's, uh, let's continue on looking at the uh, relative humidity levels. Uh, what can you tell me about the relationship uh, between relative humidity and temperature? Uh, this will be on the exam. This will be a, a, a one of the final a question on the final exam for sure. What relationship does temperature and, and humidity share or relative humidity and temperature share in particular? Just by looking at the graph, you can probably see it. So Pete says uh, temperature drops, humidity rises. Tell me why. Salim doesn't know he's yelling at me. 
Uh, yes, it's inverse, but why? Yeah, Spencer, you're right. Good job. So you guys know this. You're gonna, you're all gonna start yelling at me. Of course, you know this. As temperature rises, uh, the, the the relative humidity, the percentage of humidity in the air lowers because the the air can hold more moisture. Right? Unless we're gonna add more moisture in the air, uh, that relative humidity is the percentage of the air, the moisture is going to drop uh, as the temperature increases. Uh, that's why you see this in the graph. Uh, chances are, as the temperature starts to increase, the plants are starting, are, are gonna start transpiring a little more and, that's, um, and that relative humidity is gonna climb a little bit, right? Uh, but you can see there's an inverse relationship there uh, as immediate changes happen, right? That's why our irrigation is, is uh, largely based on temperature and humidity. Right? As the temperature increases, our, our humidity drops, our irrigation starts are going to start to increase. Okay. Um, along those lines, you can have a look at our wet bulb temperature. Our wet bulb temperature is, uh, is the same color as our rain, but it's, it's here following the, uh, the heating point here. Uh, somewhat following the, the relative humidity lines. But our wet bulb temperature isn't a percentage, right? It's, it's a temperature. Uh, so that temperature is actually going to follow the, the air temperature more closely, right? But it should be less. Uh, why is our wet bulb temperature less, uh, less warm than our air temperature, or cooler than our air temperature? What's happening there? Because it's wet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why though? What's, what's so what? Water can't be warm? What is happening? Evaporative cooling. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in order for, yeah, go ahead, Keelan. Do you have a question? Um, it takes longer to heat it up because of the water. Yeah. So, water has a, that's why we use water as a, as a, as a way to, um, Heat in the greenhouse because its retention of heat is really high. Um, but at the same time, it takes a lot of energy to to uh, to evaporate water. Right? There's uh, in order to evaporate the water. I'm not going to get into uh, the amount of energy, but it, it, it takes energy from the air to evaporate that water. Right? So as that water is evaporating, it's actually taking the heat from the air in order for it to evaporate. So that's how evaporative cooling works. Uh, so air is, um, is, is capable of, of holding, or moisture, moist air in particular, is capable of holding heat. It's called latent heat. Um, and that latent heat actually absorbs the, 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 the energy from the air in order for it to evaporate the water. So as that water is evaporating, it's actually cooling off the air because it's taking the heat from the air. Uh, that's how evaporative cooling works. That's how fan and pad cooling works. Uh, so a fan pulls uh, the, the warm, dry air from outside, pulls it across a wet surface. And as, it, as that warm air is being pulled across that wet surface, it's evaporating the water and as that water is evaporating, it's actually taking energy from the air, which is heat. And that air now that uh, is being, you know, is causing that water to evaporate now is, is being pulled into the greenhouse, which is cooler uh, than the outside air now. And that's how uh, we keep our, our, our greenhouses cool in the, uh, in the summertime. Uh, not necessarily in Niagara because it's really humid, it's surrounded by water. So you, we do have warm air that's outside, but it's warm, high humid, very moist air. Uh, so there's no capacity for it to evaporate the water. So it just stays hot. That's why we don't see a lot of fan and pad cooling in the, in the Niagara region. It don't work so well. Um, so anyway, we I get off on tangents. Uh, what else can we look at uh, for the humidity? Yeah, I already kind of went over that. What is happening at 1 p.m.? 
Uh, how do the vents affect the humidity levels? We talked about that with the rain, uh, the temperature as well. And you can see the curtains, right? Um, do the, can the curtains affect the humidity levels? See what's happening at nighttime. Humidity levels rise uh, as the curtains cover. Right? So the, cur the humidity levels rise, then we need to uncover the curtains. It looks like it's 90% covered here. Looks like there's a 10% gap. Uh, as, the, as the humidity levels rise, uh, we need to gap our, our, our curtains to release some of that humidity. Right? Same thing happens here. Curtains cover, humidity levels rise, uh, the curtain has to gap in our eventually <laughs> The humidity levels will will drop. Okay, so there's the pieces of equipment that, that affect humidity. Uh, we have vents for sure, uh, fan states which I don't have on this graph. Um, the curtain levels, irrigation starts right. So if you look at irrigation starts, there's a irrigation start. There's a humidity level climb. Makes sense, especially in in zone one, right? Uh, the heat the Sensors are right above the, uh, the table where the irrigation starts are occurring most. So if for every irrigation start, we can see a, a peak in the humidity levels, right? Every single one of them. We can follow that straight up. Right? So there's a uh, irrigation start. You see the climb in the relative humidity. Irrigation start, climb in the relative humidity. So on and so forth, right? Makes sense to me. Um, I think we've killed zone one here. Let's have a look at the other zones and see what they're doing. So this is zone two, uh, where we have our, our hydrangeas and Gerbera daisies. This is a nice uh, smooth line with our heating and cooling curves. Um, to look at. Right. Sorry about that. We'll get rid of that call. Um, anyway, light levels. I must not have the light from the weather station, this isn't working. It must not be transmitting through all zones. Uh, but anyway, um, you can see when the, the sun started to come out and it started to dissipate. Uh, again, you look at the, the humidity levels. As the temperature rises, the, the relative humidity decreases, right? Temperature decreases, our relative humidity climbs. Uh, difference between the wet bulb and the, uh, the air temperature. Okay, it basically follows that line. Um, rain states, and this is the, the light levels, which is wrong. So I gotta look at what's going on there. It must be pointing to the wrong um, sensor. Uh, the vents are wide open yesterday uh, in the afternoon as the sun comes out and they're closed, well, mostly closed right now. You can see why our temperatures are, are dropped. Okay. Pretty straightforward graph. It doesn't look anything like our, our zone one. There's a little less going on. Right. There's no irrigation. Uh, our, our temperatures are, are I'm trying to keep them a little cooler in there. So the vents aren't going crazy. Uh, the curtains are staying uh, uncovered because of the lack of sun. Zone two is pretty boring. Uh, zone three should be a little more active. Uh, what's going on here? All right, so let's look at our heating temperature. Uh, heating temperature, the red line all the way down. So we're trying to keep it at around 19 degrees. You can see that, right? Uh, follow that throughout the course of the day. 
And at uh, it's at six o'clock, so a couple hours before sun sun sundown, we drop our temperatures. Why do we drop our temperatures? What are we trying to do there? What's growing in zone three? Humidity. Um, okay, might be a reason why we want to want to drop those, but uh, that's not the reason I'm after. What uh, what are we growing in zone three? Tomatoes. Yeah, so we're growing vegetables. We're growing tomatoes and uh, peppers and eggplants. Not anymore. We took our eggplants out. Um, but we're growing vegetables. So if we drop our temp our temperatures just before sundown, what happens? Make the fruit get more sugar. Yeah, so the, the plant is gonna send all of its sugar uh, to its heat sinks, right? Uh, as the temperature cools, uh, the plant is gonna say, ooh, it's getting cold outside. What stays warm, right? So the, 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 the fruits and the vegetables, they stay warm. Uh, the sugars will go straight to the tomatoes or the peppers, which makes them sweeter. That's why we drop the temperatures at that point. So there's something going on right here between uh, six and seven ish, six forty five, um, where we don't drop it all the way down. So there's uh, an adjustment on our temperature down or, or moving it up two degrees. I'll have a look at what that is. It could be lights. Maybe our lights are coming on at that point in time. Uh, I'll have to look at the settings but I forget. Um, and then they stay cool until sundown and then they start to ramp up, right? And again, there's something going on there to jump the, the, the temperature up to a degree. So there's a setting going on just before and, and just after our dip. So you can see our, I, I wanna gradually, our ramp time is, is an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, maybe 120 minutes there, so two hours before it reaches our, our nighttime temperature. Uh, what is that? 17, 18 degrees. Okay. Uh, so we have period one throughout the day, right? Period two is our, our, our dip. And then period three would be the nighttime. And then it jumps back up to period one, our daytime. But here again, it jumps up. So there's something adjusting our, our temperature um, at sundown and then sunrise, somewhere in there. So I'll have a look at what those are, uh, but uh, yeah, there's something adjusting our heating temperature and not our cooling. Okay. So the cooling temperature, if you follow that straight down, does the same thing. Uh, and from our, from our set points, you can determine how many period, periods we have set throughout the day. So we have three periods, period one, uh, period two, period three here. Okay, so a little more uh, complex settings than zone one for our temperature controls. Um, temperature follows it pretty, pretty decently, so it's still cool enough outside uh, where we're getting a, an actual dip in temperature. So that's important. So if it's warm outside, if it's uh, you know, 25, 26 degrees outside, and we drop our temperatures down to, to 15 degrees to get a dip, it's not gonna work, right? So we need, a, we need a temperature differential between inside the greenhouse and outside the greenhouse in order to make it work. Uh, again, another reason why we don't grow or we let the greenhouse rest in the summertime as vegetable growers. Okay, uh, humidity levels, uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, something we don't have on zone one is vapor pressure deficit. So again, as our, our relative humidity dips, our deficit in humidity increases, right? It's drier conditions, um, which we can regulate uh, irrigation based off of. We can have irrigation starts based off of um, vapor pressure deficit. And again, 
relative humidity increases, our vapor pressure deficit gets more humid in the greenhouse, so our deficit is lower. Okay. Uh, rain states and uh, ventilation. Uh, so our vents stay open most of the, the day uh, when it's sunny out. And they close right around sundown, right? Uh, any questions on zone three graphs? Pretty straightforward. Good to go. Uh, zone five. There was something that I wanted to ask on this one. So here you can see there's less going on. So you can see our, our dip in the cucumber house, uh, a little more uh, prominent. Uh, relative humidity. What's happening with our relative humidity? Reading uh, 96 to 100 percent all day. What's happening in there? You think there might be an error, or you think it might be raining? <laughs> uh, cucumbers really like humidity. Yeah, they do. Um, but 100 percent humidity. You got it, Pete. 100 percent hum relative humidity is going to be raining. Right, uh, there's water droplets in the air. Uh, we, the air cannot hold any more moisture. So 100% relative humidity is, is, is not really possible. So yes, the, the, the sensors are messed up, not messed up, but the, the, the wick uh, that's, that's covering that wet bulb temperature sensor is, is dry. Um, so either the wick is, is filled with calcium buildup or the water in the reservoir is, is completely so looking at this graph, I need to, I now need to know, I know now that I need to go in and fill that water up, right? So as a technician, this is gonna be one of your duties for sure to make sure those sensors are, are working properly. Um, I usually have a, an alarm set. If, uh, if the temperature is in it, it's silent alarm. It's a silent alarm right now. Um, there you go, so there's an alarm. Zone five, wick is dry, check water reservoir, or change wick uh, in zone five, right? So I've got an alarm set for if it's 100% relative humidity. Um, I don't want to look, Cam. <laughs> it might be longer than I want to admit. It might be uh, quite a while since, uh, since we looked at that wick. <laughs> You get my point. <laughs> it's going to go back a distance. Uh, anyway, that's something that, uh, as a technician, uh, we need to start looking at a little more. Um, I will admit that I saw it uh, a week or so ago, and I and I didn't change it. So bad on me, uh, but it's a teaching moment for for me to show you guys. That's why I did it. It's a negative teaching aid. <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's not necessarily a good thing because it does uh, interrupt our purge cycle, um, all according to plan. You got that, man. This is, uh, this is a plan. It's a plan in motion. Um, it does interrupt our purge cycle. It'll, it'll interrupt our, 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 our fans, our airflow. Um, not so much heating and cooling but it would for irrigation cycles as well, but we don't have anything set up on our irrigation cycles um, there, so it's just a timer. So all in all, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wreck our purge cycle a little bit. So anyway, graphs. You guys are total pros on graphs now. Uh, any questions on graphs before we move on to looking at our irrigation review? Anything you want to look at? Anything you want to say, hey, what if we look at, at this? What happens if we do this? Nothing. Um, so again, as, uh, as, you, as, you, as you guys move on into your careers, um, learning how to, to read these graphs uh, will become part of your regular day. Uh, just opening up the uh, whatever computer control program that you have and just navigating through these graphs to see what happened throughout the course of the night. Uh, because you're not going to be there all night. You're going to feel like you're going to be there for 24 hours a day, but you're, you're really not. You're going to leave for a little bit, go get some food and rest, and then 
you know, back at her for, uh, for the first five, six, seven, eight years of your life. Uh, you'll basically be living in those greenhouses, learning every, everything you can. Um, and let's face it, the technology that you guys are gonna be facing um, will be much higher than, than what I've learned on in the past. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Sav, question. Can you mention again why the RH 100% wouldn't be a possible scenario? Uh, well, I guess it could be. Um, at 100%, clouds start to form. We start to, to develop rain, precipitation in the, in, uh, in the environment, right? Um, so again, our RH is, is, uh, is a percentage of capacity uh, that the air can hold. Um, if we did have 100% relative humidity in the, in the greenhouse, we, we would liter literally have wet surfaces everywhere. Uh, maybe not rain, so to speak, but condensation would be happening everywhere. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's enough dust in the air in, in the greenhouse that clouds could possibly form around those, uh, those dust particles, right? So yeah, if you if you grow in a tent or or like a little container or something like that, you can see those uh, the condensation happening on a regular basis. The soil's wet, the plants wet, the the surfaces of the plastic or the whatever the, the, the tent covering is is wet. Everything will be wet. All right, moving on. I'm gonna stay on on this platform. I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, but the Priva Office Direct, I'm going to stay on this rather than move, moving on to the, the operator. You can follow along on the operator. You can see that the, the controls are relatively similar. Um, let's look at, look at irrigation. Uh, I'm going to jump into water supply. because I'm in zone five, okay. Water supply settings. Uh, so water supply, um, again, talking about irrigation, water supply means where's this water coming from? Okay. Water supply could be anything from um, city water pipes, like we have here in the greenhouse, to, to tanks, to ponds. Uh, a water supply is, so if you look at our cucumber house, our water supply are those, those tanks at the end of our troughs. That's a water supply, right? Um, uh, this number here is is how much water can be supplied from from our from our water supply. So how how much water is getting uh, from our water supply to our, our our branch line? Our branch line or our water line is is what takes the water from the water supply to the greenhouse or to the area, to the crops that we want to get watered. Okay, so water supply. So think of this as a very basic thing before we move on to, uh, to anything elaborate. Uh, so water supply, again, think of our vegetables. Water supply is the, the black tanks with a, with a pond pump uh, in them, okay? Uh, so that pond pump will carry the water to the branch line, which is basically um, that little tiny two foot piece of pipe that's at the, the top of that pump, uh, where it branches off into two, uh, if we wanted to put them, we could put two solenoids, two valves uh, on, on each of those, those uh, drip line supplies, uh, which would be the valves of our water supply. Are you following along a little bit? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> let's see how bad this is going to be. this. So our water tank. <laughs> Stay with me now. So this is our water supply. Our pump is right here. Uh, the line's coming out, right? And then uh, we'll say the troughs. This is the trough. This is the trough. This is with my mouth, so don't make fun of me. Plant with the leaf. <laughs> uh, 
Awesome. Uh, anyway, the line's coming out. So this this line, that's a pipe coming up. Ooh. Uh, and then this pipe here will carry, ready as she goes, water. Better than Derek can draw with a mouse. Thank you. I got something better on Derek. <laughs> so this would be, okay, so our water supply is right here. So here, we'll do this. Water supply right there. Okay, our branch line would be this. Okay, so if we had valves right here, that's a valve, that's a valve, and this would carry our, our drip line pipe right here, right? So that would be right here and here. Now we're getting like really messy. <laughs> but anyway, we're giving it a go. Uh, water supply to our, our branch line. So how much water can our branch line supply to each valve, okay? Uh, that's what this number here is, is, is stating. Uh, and then the, amount, the number of valves that this branch line could carry is based on the amount of water that that line can actually hold and push towards the crop. Okay, so uh, the water supply goes to the branch line, the branch line goes to, to each valve. Um, again, this is something that you're going to set maybe once or twice as, uh, as time goes on. Uh, you're not going to live in here very often. Okay. Um, The recipes, um, the recipes will correspond to nothing because I don't have any recipes in this. This is where this, this one goes crap. I, I can't show you. Anyway, if we had tanks that, that had uh, fertigation supplied to them, they would go into this tank, right? So we would, we would say, we want an EC of, of uh, whatever in here and uh, a pH of whatever in here as well. Um, this is for the propagation bench? No. No, we don't have this level of control. This, this is an example of what our cucumber trough might look like, right? Um, so these are the cucumbers. Our propagation is, is only based off straight water and uh, it has two valves on it uh, coming from the city, uh, city water pipes. Uh, so if you look at our greenhouse, we have, uh, we have two, we have a north and a south. We do do it manually, but they're based on timers. Um, the pump is on a timer and the water supply is we fill it up, <laughs> right? So this is still the water supply. The water can, this water supply can only hold so much water, right? Uh, so we wouldn't be able to have, uh, you know, like six troughs for this one tank. There's not enough supply for it, right? So we only have two troughs for one of these tanks. So we have enough water supply for that, the, the, the two troughs. And that's where you would set right, this, this setting right here, if we had control in it using the cucumbers as an example. Sorry, I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, now you take, how the hell do I get rid of that eraser? Do, 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 do. There we go. <laughs> um, so our greenhouse has, uh, has city water and it has a north and a south and down that north and south, we'll have two, two water pipes. Okay, so we have one water pipe that, that supplies the north and the south. Oh, I hit my, I hit my computer. Okay, we have uh, one line that, that supplies the north and the south and off those north and the south, we have drip lines for our, for our hanging baskets. And then we have also lines coming down for our hand watering stations. Uh, in zone one, uh, we, have, uh, we have two valves uh, 
uh, with misters going off of each of those valves, right? So we're looking at a different little thing here. <laughs> um, so this, if I was standing like right here, now you can make fun of me. <laughs> and this, if, uh, if I was standing right here, looking down at the propagation benches. So we have a valve here and here, uh, and these valves are actually, they can be tied together uh, or they can be run individual. So how we monitor that, how we look at that is in our settings and we look at the valves. Okay, so our valve groups here, this is zone one. Um, rid of my guy there. Um, so we have two valves, one and two, 31 and 32. Uh, we can either have them both on the same strategy to start with, uh, or we can have them on separate strategies. Right, so the operator calls these uh, like your master and your, your slave valves, so to speak. Um, so if we had, uh, say, this one as uh, valve one, we can have this valve as, uh, as a slave to it. But in the, the Office Direct, we can just label them differently and have them controlled differently. Okay. Uh, so from the valve is where we deliver the, the water, right? So how the water gets turned on and off by the computer or through the valves. Okay. Um, and then these valves are, are triggered by our, our strategy starts. So my very crude explanation uh, is leading us to this. Uh, and this is where you're, you're going to make most of your adjustments as a, as a grower. Right? So you're going to figure out what time you want to start your irrigation program cycle. Uh, so sorry, those valves can either be controlled on, on time. So uh, like a daily, every day I'm going to irrigate a crop uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning regardless of what's going on. So this could be a greenhouse thing, this could be an outdoor thing, this could be whatever. Uh, or um, you can do it by conditions. As a, as a greenhouse grower, you're, you're gonna be doing most of your irrigation by, by growing conditions. Um, so figure out when you wanna start your irrigation cycles, figure out when you wanna end it, right? So the irrigation starts at your, your start time and it ends at the next period start time. Um, how long you want your, your valves to, to turn on for and percentages of, of that time, uh, your intervals, how long you want to uh, wait between irrigation cycles, and here's the reasons why you want to irrigate, which we talked about last week. Okay. Um, we can have two environmental conditions that we can, we can program our irrigation, ir irrigation cycles to. They can be tied together or they can be separate, okay? So in this case, our light intensity has to be over 400 uh, and our, our relative humidity in the, in the greenhouse has to be uh, less than 80%, okay? If it's above either one of these or it's below 400 and above 80, our irrigation cycle is gonna be 120 minutes, okay? Uh, if it's above 400 and below 80, then our irrigation cycle will be 60 minutes apart. We saw that in the graph, right? All right. Um, down here is, is uh, length of time, how long we want our, our valves to turn on for. Um, if we had water sensor, uh, water flow sensor in our lines, we can, we can measure the amount of water going to each plant. Um, we can turn the valves on for, uh, for a specific uh, amount of time, which we, which we do. Um, and here, if we had our flood tables, we would control the, the amount of water going into the flood tables here. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, we talked about those last week. And we got um, 
So if there's any questions on, on irrigation that you had from last week, we can, we can talk about that now. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the difference between water supply versus water lines versus valves and how we control those valves to turn on and off. Right? Um, and then recipes are, are based on water supply. What you see in pH we want to deliver to those crops. It's really not that complicated once you simplify everything. Okay? So we'll try and break everything down uh, and understand where the water is coming from and why you want to, to start the watering cycles. Okay. All right, no questions. Moving on. Custom programs. Uh, So we can have uh, custom, custom programs in our settings, climate custom control settings uh, in here. Uh, so our settings and then climate custom controls, uh, or we can override and have pesticide control program. They're both custom controls and they both override your, uh, your equipment based on the settings that you program to, okay? So in this instance, the climate custom control settings, uh, say you, you, you don't, you wanna control something and, and you, you don't have that capacity or you think that uh, uh, this software doesn't do it justice. It, do, it, uh, it doesn't do something that you want it to do, right? So um, you had a timer on a, or an ear, or sorry, an electrical outlet that you wanna control or a timer that you wanna control. You can do that here. Right, so you, you, you start it by clicking yes, right? Then you get all your options opened. Uh, then your start time, what time do you want your, your custom program to start? Uh, what time do you want it to stop? Uh, and if you're controlling specific uh, equipment like lights or uh, a boiler or something you don't wanna cycle on and off, you can have a minimum time on or a minimum time off to protect it, right? Um, and if you had a piece of equipment that takes uh, a little bit to, to start, you can delay it on or off, okay? Um, and then here's your conditions you want it to start. Uh, so you can have a number of different conditions you want this, this custom program to start. I'll show you an example in a second. Um, and what you're comparing it to, so your environmental conditions, right? So here's your environmental conditions you want it to start and you can you can compare it to another environmental condition or you can leave this at zero and put uh, your offset value here okay uh, so if you're talking about sunlight so if your sunlight is above your measured temp is a, is greater than I don't know, 20 degrees then we want to open our vents curtain position. So here's the, the piece of equipment to control. Okay, so override control. Uh, I'm not going to set it because it's actually going to do something. Um, we want our minimum vent position to be 100%. Okay. Um, I'm going to set this to 12, 12. So it's not going to go. Um, so if our offset value, sorry, there's our offset value. If our measured temp is greater than 20 uh, and our outside temp is greater than 20, <laughs> whatever, our, min our minimum vent position is now going to be 100%. Uh, we can do another piece of equipment. Uh, we can control up to four pieces of equipment and we can um, adjust our temperature uh, according to any of these conditions as well. So there's a lot of flexibility that we can do here, right? Uh, we can control a, a number of, uh, of pieces of equipment. Uh, we can adjust our temperature um, based on environmental conditions, okay? So here's our custom control program. I'm going to show you snow melt. So we don't have anything specifically in Priva Office Direct 
to melt the snow that might be in the, the gutters of our greenhouse. So we've written a, a, a custom control program based on uh, outside temperature. Okay, so start time 1 a.m. Uh, stop time 1 a.m. So it's a 24 hour period, right? So any time within the day, um, our minimum time on, so this is affecting our, um, our valves. So our, our valve is gonna open uh, for at least two hours uh, and it's gonna stay closed for at least five minutes. We're gonna delay it for 20 minutes. Uh, and the conditions are, if the outside temperature is less than minus 0.5, right? and uh, the rain state is greater than zero, um, these conditions are gonna be met. So if it's less than zero and, our, and it's raining, chances are it's gonna be snowing. So if that's the case, then we're gonna open up our, our valve. And we have a, if you, if you look at our greenhouse, we actually have a heating pipe that's pretty close to our, our gutters. That heating pipe controls the, the amount of snow it's allowed to rest in the uh, in the gutter uh, of our greenhouses, right? So that's uh, it's supposed to, to melt the snow above the gutters. Uh, so this is a specific uh, custom control that we've set up because there isn't something in the uh, in this piece of software to do that. We don't have a sensor to detect snow, right? We have a sensor to detect rain, uh, but we don't have a sensor to detect snow. So we're making an assumption if it's less than zero and it's, rain, it's raining out, then it's snowing. And if it's snowing out, we're gonna open up our valves um, for the, 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 the snow melt to 100% and it's going to melt the snow above the gutters. All right, so that's, a, that's a, an example of a, of a, of a custom control uh, setting that we can program. And you can do up to six of these per zone, okay? So again, if we wanted to control an electrical outlet or a timer, um, like say our timers were in the cucumber house were set to or are plugged into an electrical outlet uh, that the Priva controls can control. Uh, we might be able to say if it's sunny outside um, or we plug a pump directly into that, that outlet. Uh, if it's sunny outside, uh, let's start an irrigation, turn that pump on, turn that outlet on, okay? We can do that. So that's what a, a climate control program can do for you. Okay, so let's look at overrides and pesticide controls. Um, so this can be something somewhat of the same kind of idea as a climate control or custom control. Um, so if we have a, a, a sprayer an automated sprayer in the greenhouse. We wanted to control, uh, we can control it with this, or if we had just a, a schedule. Uh, so some dude with a backpack or, or somebody with a backpack sprayer uh, is going to, to, to spray at four o'clock on uh, every day, uh, we can set this up. And what this does, uh, is we're, we're able to control pieces of equipment within the greenhouse uh, for every phase of our spray, right? So our pre-spray time, so maybe this is the time here you're taking to mix the sprays. Uh, you know, we need a, a half an hour to let the, the, the greenhouse environment settle. Uh, we can control up to like six pieces of equipment. Uh, we wanna turn off the fans. We wanna make sure the vents are closed. Maybe we want the curtains the shade curtains uh, covering the crops. Uh, so we'd start setting all this, uh, this up now, okay? Uh, and then during our spray, uh, we'd have a, a second set of uh, um, overrides that we would uh, program for our equipment, right? So we wanna keep our, we definitely wanna keep our vents closed, our fans off, that kind of stuff. We wanna keep a nice calm, environment for our, our, uh, our spray to settle on the crop. 
Okay, and then we can have a wait time. Right? We want the, the chemical to dry on the foliage or, or whatever uh, during that wait time. And every pesticide might be a little different. Okay, and uh, a purge time. Um, this allows our, our vents to open, right? We want to open them up 100%. Regardless of what's going on outside, we want to get all that pesticide, all that crappy stuff out of the greenhouse. Our fans might, uh, well, you know, during our wait time, maybe our fans turn on, purge time, vents open, curtains are open wide, our fans turn off. Now we can get uh, uh, some good airflow in the greenhouse. And what time do we want it to end? The whole cycle will end based on, on the time you set here. And then it'll go back to automatic control. So the vents will, will go back to automatic control, the fans, the curtains, whatever, right? So we don't want irrigation to go off. We don't want, uh, our, we want our vents to stay closed during our spray. We want our fans off. Uh, we want a whole bunch of different things during our spray cycle. This is where we can program it. All right, uh, so that's a, that's a capability of most uh, computer controls as well. Not much else to talk about that. Um, basically, when we're spraying, we want to control pieces of equipment. Uh, we're going to do so in this page. Okay. Cool. Any questions on that? No. Oh, good. Thanks, Chad. Uh, exam time. So the final exam. Um, we're going to cover everything from you know, beginning of class time, so beginning of January all the way to what we talked about today, pesticide control or custom control programs. Um, I will give you a review. Uh, it'll be just, it'll be similar to the midterm review where you're going to have a test that you can play around on, look at questions. Those questions might even be uh, repeating. You can never know. I might use uh, similar questions on the uh, final as I did on the review. Um, I might use the exact questions, just changing the numbers a little bit. Never know. Uh, but that will be posted sometime um, in the next day or so. Okay. Uh, so have, uh, have a look at that. Um, I don't, I, I don't think that I'll have uh, a lecture. Well, I'm not going to have a lesson next week, but uh, if I need to be online, I can be. Uh, please let me know. Shoot me an email. Shoot me whatever. Let me know. And I don't think you guys are coming to class this week. I don't know. Are you coming to class this week? Corey, are you coming to class this week? Jared's coming. Okay, cool. There, yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Come to class. We'll have, uh, we'll have some stuff to do. Uh, if we can chat then. Okay. Let me know if you, you guys have any questions. Uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions on anything that we've talked about. Um, and yeah, I guess this is, uh, this is it for today anyway. Actual exam will be next week, yeah. yeah. That's our last week of classes, right? Am I missing a week? I'm not missing a week, am I? <laughs> Don't mess with me, Jared. I think Jared's trying to mess with me. Should I get them going and just talk about parking? <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, I'll, it won't be on Monday. It'll be it'll be later in the week. Uh, probably have. Uh, I'm not going to set it for three hours. You're probably going to have a day or so to do it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll set uh, I'll set all those parameters up and, and make sure you. Definitely aware of uh, any rules that you need to follow when you're writing the exam. Um, the exam is going to be similar format to the the midterm. A lot of true and false, multiple choice, matching. Uh, I'm going to have more graphs up there, so you're going to have to read graphs. Maybe a couple short answer type of things. So, yeah, it, you're, good. you're good. Nothing to sweat about. All right, all I got for today.
See you, Graham. Thanks. See you, Dan. See you, Corey. Thanks, buddy. See you on Wednesday. Yeah, sounds good. Ready. Stop sharing. And ending. Bye, guys. <laughs>